Happy New Year, Dr. Anna Maria Helt here at Osada Natural Health. Welcome to Monday's Mushroom episode 24. And I realize that it's rare that I do these on Mondays, but I'm just sticking with the title. So today I'm going to talk about jelly ear mushrooms, otherwise known as wood ears. And these are mushrooms that grow in many parts of the world and in some parts of the world have a long tradition of being used as food and medicine. The genus name or the one of the botanical names for wood ear or jelly ears is auricularia, which I'm probably butchering, but there it is. In Latin, it means ear, and you can see why. The fruiting bodies are rather ear-shaped, and sometimes even more so than the one I'm showing here that I picked this uh, late summer, early fall. Now, um, right now, when you look in guidebooks, you will see auricularia auricula judae, which is here. Um, I don't, actually, I guess you can't see my cursor moving. You can see it's spelled on this slide. Uh, however, genetic analyses starting around 2015 or so, maybe a little earlier, is finding that this species is not found in North America. And in fact, many of the mushrooms that were referred to as the species around the world are other species of auricularia. This particular one, auricularia auricula jude, is Judas's ear by common name. But it, despite what you'll see in guidebooks, that's not what's in North America where we have auricularia americana, auricularia angiospermum, and at this point about two other species that have been delineated now via genetics. And if you want to nerd out on some of the genetics, you can look up the paper by Wu et al. in 2015 in Mycological Press. There's an earlier paper as well um, for you diehard nerds. Now, Auricularia americana, which is the one that I found, grows on conifers, uh, so dead conifers, uh, stumps and logs. If you see one of these on a live tree, it means the tree's probably sick and dying. This one's a little beat up here and kind of folded up so you can see one side of it will sometimes have a whitish or frostyish tinge to it. Uh, but uh, wood ears can also grow on hardwoods as well. So other species of wood ear can be found on hardwoods. Now, wood ears will be uh, rubbery in texture. You can squeeze them and they'll spring back to shape. The underside is going to be wrinkly and you can see some of those wrinkles here. Younger ones might actually have a frosty look to them when you look at them. So they're, they're brownish, but uh, when you flip them, they'll have kind of a, a frost uh, like texture due to hairs on them on the other side of the wrinkly side. And then when they dry out, they'll turn black. But these are really cool mushrooms because they can dry out while they're stuck to the log or stump. And then they'll rehydrate again and pop right back to their original shape. Now, if you grab one of these and you can crack it, it's a different species. You shouldn't be able to just squish it into mush either. That would mean it's a different kind of jelly fungus. So these are cool weather mushrooms. They like to show up, depending on the species, um, in the spring and then again in the fall and even into early winter. So this can be, we are in winter now, this can be one of the earlier species you start to look for in the spring in your area. Now, of course, don't ever eat anything. I'm, gonna, I'm about to talk about food here, but don't ever eat a mushroom without being absolutely sure of identification. Videos like this can get you started on seeing what a particular mushroom looks like, but this is definitely not sufficient for you to make a positive ID. So get a couple of local guidebooks and get educated. Maybe uh, join your local mycological society, go on forays, things like that, just in general, when learning to identify edible mushrooms. Regardless, um, you may have actually had wood ear fungus or wood ear mushrooms and not even realized it. So if you've ever eaten hot sour soup or mushu pork, there's a good chance uh, if it's made authentically that it had wood ear mushrooms in it. You can see the mushrooms here, the brown things chopped up and mixed in with the pork and the other ingredients. So this has been eaten for a very long time as a nutritious food that adds great texture to dishes. Um, so this has been eaten in China or is eaten in China and Vietnam and Japan, Korea, 
uh, even New Zealand. We don't hear about it quite as much here in North America, but it's, um, like I said, if you've eaten Chinese cuisine, you've probably eaten this. And it is gaining popularity as wild mushrooms are gaining popularity here um, in the States. So if you happen to buy a dried wood ear, uh, and you can actually get this in certain grocery stores, this one's a f another really lovely freshie, uh, but if you happen to get these dry, you can actually just simply rehydrate them before using them in your recipes. You can soak them for a couple of hours or even longer in water. You can use hot water to speed that process up, but the texture is not going to be as good. Um, and then you want to cook them. So one way could be just to cook them along with whatever soup you're putting them in or to stir fry them. But I like to blanch them. So just simmering them for a little bit and then rinsing them in hot water. And that's a great way to maintain the texture. You just don't use mushrooms in general raw. Um, now, this mushroom also has, or I should say, multiple auricularia species or woodier species have a long history of use as medicine as well. So in China, a very long history of use of wood ears in medicine. You can nerd out on this in the book Icons of Medicinal Fungi from China, which has great drawings of many species of medicinal fungi and some pictures as well traditional uses, energetics, research. It's an older book, so the research is not going to be up to date, but it's a great resource. Anyway, um, different species of wood ear were used for a range of issues, everything from hemorrhoids to use as a stomach tonic, use for promoting healthy energy or chi flow um, are some of the ancient uses of this mushroom. Uh, also, uh, the mushroom itself was used to stop hemorrhaging, so stop heavy bleeding, while at the same time promoting blood circulation. Now, what's really interesting is when you look up blog posts and vlogs and stuff on this mushroom, uh, people will talk about um, its anticoagulant properties. But as far as I can tell where that's coming from are some lab studies in test tubes, as well as looking at rodent blood, where uh, in those circumstances, some polysaccharides isolated from the mushroom show anticoagulant effects. How that plays out in the mushroom as a whole, I don't know, but mushrooms and herbs often have these weird effects where they seem to counter each other. As I just said, one of the traditional uses of more than one wood ear species was to actually staunch heavy bleeding, um, but at the same time to promote circulation. So. I would just say if somebody is on uh, anticoagulant medication to use caution with this, this mushroom uh, if those lab observed anticoagulant effects are seen in the context of the whole mushroom you need to be careful of that um, but if there are, are procoagulant effects using the whole mushroom as based on their tradition as based on the use of hem uh, for hemorrhaging, you also want to be careful with that so that you're not getting um, counter effects to your medication. Anyway, moving on, uh, the wood ear mushroom has been used for a long time to promote healthy bowel movements, uh, to nourish the lungs as well, um, for elevated blood pressure and vascular health in general, for rheumatic pains, which is an old fashioned term for sort of arthritis type pains or sore muscle type pains, specifically in the lower limbs and the low back, and even for some eye related issues. There's been a decent amount of lab based research done on wood ears as well. And a lot of this is cell culture based. There's some test tube based studies and then some rodent studies. Now, these sorts of studies can be useful to define underlying mechanisms of action and such, but you have to take the conclusions with a grain of salt because um, they don't necessarily reflect what happens in the human body. So as an example, in a, say a test tube or a cell culture based study where you're adding a mushroom extract to some cells 
to look for whatever effect you're looking at, anti-tumor, for example. Um, you're effectively bypassing the digestive process that would occur if somebody was actually taking the mushroom orally or if a clinical trial were being done where people were being given the mushroom or its polysaccharides or other constituents orally. Uh, rodents, whether we're talking about mice or rats, their physiology in many ways reflects ours, but in many ways is quite different. And so again, things that happen in rodents, for instance, anti-tumor effects seen by a mushroom um, aren't necessarily seen in a person. The can cancer development is a bit different in rodents, for instance, than it is in people. But anyway, there have been um, a number of lab studies done with wood ears and just a quick summary there uh, some of the studies in cell culture suggest possible skin healing effects of uh, wood ears involving uh, uh, collagen production and other mechanisms like all mushrooms that have been tested in lab studies wood ears demonstrate various types of antioxidant effects in cells or in test tube studies and even in rodent studies uh, this next one's interesting. So in rodent studies and in test tube studies, uh, wood ear polysaccharides have been found to have anticoagulant effects. Now, I just told you one of the traditional uses of wood ear mushrooms in China was to stop heavy bleeding for hemorrhaging, um, but also to promote healthy blood circulation. And so here we come now with a study showing blood thinning effects or anticoagulant effects. Now it's not unusual for a plant or a mushroom to have seemingly opposing effects, but I do think it is interesting in the context of the traditional usage that this particular study is showing blood thinning effects. Um, so uh, how this particular study I'm thinking about was done is first, uh, the crude polysaccharide extract was tested with blood in a test tube and shown to slow clotting effects. And mechanistic studies showed that this was at least in part due to effects on a factor known as thrombin. Now, rats were subsequently fed uh, these polysaccharides and then their blood was drawn and that blood that was drawn from the rodents fed wood ear polysaccharides took longer to clot than blood drawn from control rodents that were not fed the polysaccharides. And what this brings up is that you might want to be careful if you are on anticoagulant medication like Xeralto or Warfarin or what have you um, because of this. If there is an honest to goodness anticoagulant effect going on in people when they're eating the mushrooms, maybe you don't want to eat a whole bunch of these in a meal. Um, and the same thing when you look at the traditional usage where the mushroom was used or is used for heavy bleeding and hemorrhaging and circulation, there's just enough complexity going on here that you might want to avoid this mushroom if you're on blood thinning drugs. Um, now, uh, other rodent studies show liver protective effects against toxic insult. Um, they show effects on blood lipids in rodents fed a high fat diet. Um, their triglyceride levels come down, their total cholesterol levels come down, their LDL cholesterol comes down. Now, LDL itself is not cholesterol, it's simply a carrier molecule, like a suitcase that carries cholesterol from the liver out into the body where it's used. So that level of uh, LDL cholesterol that level of cholesterol being carried out into the body by LDL went down in these rodent studies. And then also in studies where rodents, where mice were fed a high fat diet, uh, treatment with this mushroom decreased their blood sugar levels. Now, again, interesting observations, interesting data, um, whether it translates to the reality in people or not, don't know, um, remains to be seen. Thanks for watching. As usual, any questions or comments you can put into the comment section. I read them all and try to respond to all of them. Take care, everybody. Happy January.